Hello there, this is an Algebra 2 video, it's chapter 5, section 4, and today we are going to be continuing talking about graphs of polynomial functions, and we're going to be analyzing um, extrema and also um, the uh, x-intercepts, the zeros of the function. So, uh, I will warn you that I am going to be using the calculator for some portions of this, and we have gone over those steps in the past, and I will mention them again in this lesson, but if for some reason you don't remember how to do it on the calculator, then um, you can ask me in class and I can go over it again. But um, basically they're asking us to graph this function and we already saw in the previous section that um, when it's an even exponent up here and negative that we're gonna have our end behavior is going to be um, going down on both ends. And so they want us to graph this and there's really no easy way around it. You just have to make a table of values. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm sure you already know, but I'm going to do it for one of the values. But as you can see, there's several values that you can plug in. And so the, in the interest of time, I'm not going to plug all of them in here on, in the video. But I will do one of them so you can see how it works. And then um, we'll fill in the rest of it with the calculator. So I'm just going to pick negative 1, for example. So if I want to find f of negative 1, then I need to replace all of these x's with negative 1. So the first thing I do is make sure I write parentheses in all the places where there is an x. So I have negative x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x, and I did not put my parentheses there. Look at that. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and replace all of these x's with negative 1. And then I'm going to evaluate what that equals. Negative 1 to the, an even power is going to be positive 1. But then that positive 1 times this negative will make it negative 1. Negative 1 to an odd power is going to be negative 1. So we have another negative 1 there. Negative 1, again, to an even power is going to be positive 1 times 3, so plus 3. And then lastly, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So we're going to get negative 2. Um, 3 minus 2 is 1, so we're going to get negative 2 plus 1, and so at the end of the day, we get negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put over here, next to my negative 1 for x, a negative 1 value for y. And basically what you would have to do is do that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. And that's a lot of times, so I don't want to um, sit here and do that over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the calculator, and again, if you want to use the calculator, what you have to do is go to your y equals menu, and type in the function. And once you've done that, you go to your graph and you get second trace. And then you want option one for value. And then you just type in the value. So you can even type in the negative one and confirm that the y value in fact is negative one. So I'm now going to fill in my table here with negative um, 2.5. I get negative 40.9. When I plug in negative 2, I get negative 16. When I plug in negative 1.5, I get negative 4.68 something. When I plug in negative 0 0.5, I get negative 0.4375. When I plug in 0, I get 0. 0.5, you get 1.8 roughly. Plug in 1, you get 5. Plug in 1.5, you get roughly 8. Plug in 2, um, you definitely get 8. So when you plug in 1.5, you get 8.0625. 2.5, you get 0.3125. And when you plug in 3, you get negative 20. Oh, no. All right. So... That's basically our table. So once you've filled in your table, you're just going to come over here and basically plot the points and then draw a smooth curve through all of them, um, hoping, hoping that we keep in, in uh, contact with the end behavior we already said earlier. It should be going down in both directions. We're going to confirm that in a second. So negative 2.5 is right about here, and it's negative 40. But that falls way off my graph, so I'm not going to worry about plotting that point. And you can do that as well. Um, negative 2, negative 16 is my next one, and again, I'm going by um, 2's here. So I can probably fit that one in. Here's 12, so I'm guessing uh, 14 will be about here, 16 will be about here. And I want to go negative 2, negative 16. So there's my point. 
negative 1.5 is right about here, and it's negative 4.6, so 2, 4, I think somewhere around here, and then we're going to do negative 1, negative 1, so that's going to be right about there. We also have 0, 0 right about here, um, 0.5 and 1.8, so here's 0 0.5, and here's 1, and there's 2, so it's going to be close to that, and then we're going to get 1.5 and 8, so and 2 is also 8, so 2, 4, 6, 8. And then we have um, 2.5 is 0.3, so 1, 2.5 is 0.3, comes back down over here. And then 3, negative 21. So 1, 2, 3, negative 21 is going to be way down there somewhere. So you might be wondering right now if, you, if, if you're going to try to connect these, how do you do that? Like how do you, do you start over here and try to, you know, but again, that's where the end behavior is really important. You have to remember that when you have a negative and an even um, exponent, that, that means that the two um, arms of the function are going to be going down. So we're actually going to end up with a graph that looks something like that. Doesn't that look pretty? OK. So anywho, that's how you graph the function by making table values. But again, it's very handy to have the calculator um, to be able to plug all those numbers in. Um, I'm pretty confident that most of you already know how to evaluate a function. We've done that a long time ago. Um, so again, the goal of this part is not so much can you evaluate, but whether or not you can um, do the graph with the correct end behavior. So this is your do-it-yourself question, and then we will graph another one right after we talk about the location principle. There's a couple of things that you probably noticed in the, in the last graph. I'm going to go back to that screen real quick. Um, we know that one of the zeros is right here, and we know that because we got x0, y0. So we're looking for anywhere where the y value is 0. And what the location principle basically tells us is that any time the, the function changes sign, that's going to be somewhere where you have a 0. So um, if it doesn't actually equal 0, then you'll notice that these are all negative values. And then it went from having a negative value to a, uh, a 0 here. And here it's staying positive, 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 positive. You'll notice that between 2.5 and 3, it went from a positive 0.3125 to negative 21. This indicates that somewhere in between 2.5 and 3, the graph is going to actually cross the x-axis and it will actually have a zero there. Um, but we don't know what that exact value is, but we can estimate that it's somewhere between 2.5 and 3 and probably closer to 2.5, which is 0.3, really close to zero as opposed to closer to the 3, which is negative 21. So that principle is what we're talking about in this um, diagram here. We have a function, which is the green graph that you see here. And um, we're noticing that we have, I have two points that I've marked on the graph. There's a point here, and there's a point here. One's blue, one's red. And so the x-coordinate of this point we'll call b. And so the y-coordinate would be f of b. And the x-coordinate of the blue point is a and therefore the y-coordinate would be f of a. So if I write the ordered pair, it would be b for the x, f of b for the y, a for the x, f of a for the y. Um, and what the basic principle says is that if f of a is less than 0, in other words, negative, so you'll notice that the y value here is negative, and then the f of b, which is the y value of the red dot, is positive. So if you have that where it changes sign, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative or, or negative positive, but what matters is that it's changing sign, that one's in the negative and one's in the positive. When that happens, then that means that the function somewhere in between A and B, it had to have crossed the x-axis, which is what this would indicate right here. Right there between A and B, it's got to cross the x-axis, and that's what we're doing. So in our next example, we're going to be looking at our table to determine um, the two integer values for which the zero should be in between. So again, we have a function here, and I have already programmed it into my calculator. So um, we are going to do the same thing. I'm going to fill in my table. I just have a random selection of x coordinates. Uh, you always want to get some negative, always include zero, and then some positive. There's no need to get crazy and put things like negative 50. I mean, you could, but you don't want to graph x negative 50 because then your graph is going to be huge mungus. So you want to try to stay close to zero, um, but you do want to pick negatives and positives. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to my um, trace feature, and I'm going to plug in the negative 2, 
and I get negative 29. Negative 1, I get negative 7. 0, I get 1. For 1, I get 1 again. And for 2, I get negative 1. And then 3, I get 1. And for 4, I get 13. Alrighty? So remember that what we're looking for here is the places where um, the y values change sign, where it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative. So we can look for those places right about here. We have negative 7 goes to a positive 1. We also have 1 to negative 1. And, that's, and then we have a negative 1 to a positive 1. So we have three different um, sign changes there. And so that's going to be indicative of the graph crossing the x-axis three times in this case. So we're going to now, it also says not only do we want to do that, but it does want us to state the integer values um, between which each real zero occurs. So we're going to say that it's going to be between negative 1 and 0. So we're not, we don't want to write the y value, we want to write the x values that it's between. So between negative 1 and 0. And then we're going to have one between 1 and 2. And then we're going to have one between 2 and 3 based on our table. So now we're going to actually plot the graph. So we got negative 2, negative 2, again negative 2 is here, negative 29 is way down here somewhere. Um, this is a positive and odd function. So with odd functions, you all, the end behavior should be that on one end it's going down, on the other end it's going up. So we expect it to happen. And so when we get negative 2, negative 29, it's going to be way down there. That's um, consistent with what we already know. So negative 1 and negative 7 will be probably somewhere around here. Put my point there. Um, 0, 1, right about there. And then we have um, 1, 1. And then we have um, 2, negative 1. And then we've got 3, 1. And then we've got 413. So it's 4, ah, but this will be way, ah, we'll just put it up there somewhere. Okay? So what's going to happen here is that we're going to get our graph. It's going to look something like this. It's going to go way over there. But you can see how the end behavior is consistent. It's going up on this side and going down, down, down on that side. And that's what we expected. And it's also going to be crossing three times. And we can even check that between negative 1 and 0, it definitely crossed there somewhere. And then we also, between 1 and 2, it crossed right there. And between 2 and 3, it's also crossing again. So um, very consistent with what we got from our table. So now you can try this example. And then we will go on to the last topic of today, which is extrema. And extrema is basically um, a word that we use to describe um, relative max and min. So when you talk about extrema, you're talking about both maxes and mins. So, um, Individually, it's either a max or a min, but when you have more than one, then you say extrema. So here's my graph, um, just to kind of show you what that means. I like to use the term hill and valley. Um, sometimes people call them turning points. It's the place where the graph kind of turns, you know, a point there. But basically, you either have a valley, like this is a valley, or a hill. Okay, so point A represents um, a relative max, and point B represents a relative min. So basically what it means is that it's the highest or lowest point on the graph. Now we know that it can't be the absolute highest because this arrow indicates that the function is going to keep going higher and higher and higher. So then any point over here would be higher than this point, and any point over here would be lower than point B. But when you think about locally, if you were to use like for example a magnifying glass and just kind of look at this area, when you look at just that area, then yes, this is the highest point in that general area, and this is the lowest point in that general area. So it's kind of think about like your life, and sometimes you know you have highs, you have good days, bad days, um, and it's just kind of like a hill or a valley. So I don't know if that makes sense for you, but um, we're going to be finding ways to find max and min based on our t-table. So here we have our last example, and again, I've already pre-programmed that into my calculadora for efficiency purposes. And so we're going to fill in our table over here. So we're going to go um, using the calc feature again. And we're going to plug in negative 2. You can see how much I love using these same numbers all the time. 
because it works. Now you can pick whatever numbers you'd like. You can even pick fractions if you want to. But my guess is that you're not going to want to. So let's see. 3 is negative 12. 4 is negative 5. And 5 is 18. So we have all these values. So how can we tell from a t-table whether or not we have a max or a min? Well, we know that for, for you to have a max, it means that you're like the you're bigger than all the points around you. And if you're a minimum, then you are um, smaller than all the points around you. So for example, we can start here with a zero. A zero is going to be um, larger than negative 17, but zero is not larger than three, right? Zero is not larger than three. So this is not going to be a max situation. But then you can just keep moving on. And for example, you can see um, here the 3 is bigger than the 0, and the 3 is bigger than the negative 2. It's bigger than both. In both directions, it's bigger. So this is probably going to be a relative max. Okay? And then when you look at the next one, same idea. You say, okay, negative 2 is smaller than 3, but negative 2 is not smaller than negative 9. So that's not going to be a min. And then negative 9 is smaller than negative 2, but negative 9 is bigger than negative 12. So still not a min. Negative 12 is smaller than negative 9, and negative 12 is also smaller than negative 5. Right? So in this case, this would be an indication of a relative min, because this number is smaller than the two around it. This is a max because this number is bigger than the two that are around it. Um, and then, of course, you can keep doing that as you go through your table. Um, but basically, we also have a rule of thumb that tells us that you cannot have more um, turning points than the degree minus 1. Okay, so if this had been x to the fifth power, then it would be possible to have four extrema. But in this case, because you have a cubic, the most you can have is two, and we've already found them. So there's no need to keep going um, further with that. Um, so now remember, you don't have to have two, but you won't have more than two. So in this case, we're good with that. And now all we have to do is um, confirm all of our other results with the end behavior. It's a cubic again, so if we know that it's going to be down on one end and up on the other end. And then we can fill in our table. So negative 2 is going to be negative 17, probably down here somewhere. Negative 1, 0 will be here. 0, 3, 1, 2, well, I'm going by 2's here. Let's not do that wrong. 2, 4, 6, okay, so we're going 3 is going to be here. And then 1, negative 2 will be here. And that probably wasn't all the way down there. 10, 12, eh, it's not that bad, not that off. I almost forgot that I was going by twos there. Um, and then where was I here? Two negative nines, so two, two, four, six, and the negative nines will be right about there. Um, three negative 12, maybe here. And then four negative five, four, two, four negative five. And then 5, 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 18 is going to be up here somewhere. So you can see that at um, 0, you're going to have a max zone. So it's going to be kind of like a, a hill there. And at 3, which is down here, you're going to have... So let me just kind of... Uh, there you go. So we can see our behavior is normal. It's going down here. It's going up there. We can see that... Um, we have our maximum here and our minimum there. It's supposed to be a hill and a valley. And then if you want to, you can even talk about changing the signs between negative 2 and negative 1. They change sign. So we know that between negative 2 and negative 1, it's going to cross the x-axis. Um, also between 0 and 1, it's going to do the same thing, which it did. And we can also see between um, 4 and 5, it's also um, changing signs. So it's going to cross again there as well. So all that information you can tell just by looking at a t-table. So now you will try this example, and once you have done this, you will have completed your notes for this lesson, and I will see you in class, and thank you for watching.